I think what would be really great is, is for you to talk about how, you know, how a bass player, because a lot of bass players learn on a regular bass. They don't go to a fretless instantly. So what, how would you switch from playing a fretted bass to a fretless? What are your techniques and, and tricks to be able to do that? I suggest what I did, um, you know, the, the first first time I think I had a, um, I went through the Rickenbacker, the P bass and all that, and then I, I got a hold of the 69 fretless P bass, which is stock, unbelievable. No lines, rosewood neck, a uh, fingerboard, and uh, I played it, I love the tone, I love the idea of sliding into a note and growl, the growl. But when I started playing songs, I was all over the place, like I was there, a little flat, a little sharp, and it scared me. <laughs> because <clears throat> at the time I was also singing a little bit, and so it was too, too much for my brain. <clears throat> so what I started doing is I started bringing a fretless with me to every gig. Uh, the other thing that happened is all my peers kind of discouraged me, which happens a lot, as opposed to us helping each other and, you know, uh, supporting each other in, in, in our endeavors is uh, everybody would discourage, don't play a fretless, man, that's, no, 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 you know, play with a pick or play a four and that's it, no more, no less. And, uh, but I had this thing about um, jazz and, and, and big band stuff and bebop stuff, and I could hear the, 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 the big box, you know, the, the upright, you know? Uh. You know what I'm saying? So I could hear that in a lot of the music, even though I was doing rock and roll, but <clears throat> and I could achieve that with the fretless. So I started sneaking it in. And uh, there's a lot of cats out that I, I, I just adore their, their, their fretless playing, you know, Lynn Caron, um, uh, Steve Bailey, um, <clears throat> um, Gary Willis. These guys are amazing. And I think the, they all talk about uh, practicing a lot, obviously. Your positioning is very important. And practicing uh, in the dark so you could hear the notes and kind of know where your position is. And that's where I recommend, if you're going to play fretless, not to move around too much. Mm -hmm. I've, I've had this scale, which is a 34 scale. This scale I discovered with Michael Tobias when he was here in Burbank. Anybody remember mm -hmm. Tobias? Yep. My, he's my hero. He knows basses inside and out. And uh, I'm a big fan of his, anything that he does. So I discovered this scale. I discovered this configuration, this neck. It was built by him for me. And I brought it into every, every facet that I move on to the different companies. So uh, the specs are there. I try to keep it consistent. Even though people will say, why don't you check out a 35 or a 36? So it's going to kill me because not yeah. enough positioning my... My muscle, my memory is somewhere else, and I've tried it, and and it's really hard when I'm having the same, and trying to figure out where your notes are. Here, it's almost like I'm at home. I don't even think about it, you know. <laughs> So <clears throat> the other thing that happened with that unlined fretless is I was really uh, into partying in those days. <laughs> I was drinking a lot, doing a lot of drugs, all the stuff I shouldn't be doing. I had to do it. But um, so I'd come into a session and my brain would be hearing one thing and my hands would be in a different place. And, and so the flat and the sharp thing became a big issue. So I started doing the lines. And I'll tell you something about fretless, even though, even though the lines are there, which makes the fretless tone so cool, in my opinion, this is just me, is that you'll never be dead on. You learn how to slide into a tone yeah. and come back. Even though you do it, it's very subtle. What's well, so cool, and you were doing this when you were warming up before the show, and you did it in the song. It's, it's. I mean, there's a lot going on in the song, but it's there. Is the way you bend the harmonics. You put them in. It's so beautiful, right? <laughs> yeah, you do these great harm. I mean, it just. I mean, I know Jocko had done a lot of that stuff, but it's just, it, you, it's brilliant. It's just. And 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 cats like him. Before I heard Jocko for the first time, and it was that solo album that just amazed everybody. 
I was listening to Ron Carter, I was listening to Charlie Mingus, and even Miroslav Vito's with Weather Report, and I used to love, again, that acoustic thing that when you hear the, the box, the mic in the box, and you hear the, the fingers on the yeah, fingerboard, yeah. I, for some reason that was so percussive, and it was like su such a great character to that tone. And there's nothing like acoustic bass, we, you know, uh, live and, and recording. It's amazing. So, and I learned so much about positioning and technique. And yeah, it, 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 Scott's filming it, but yeah. when you see him, actually, the position you're taking is more like classical guitar. It is, yeah. He has that that where the the guitar is angled at about uh, 50 degrees or yeah. something. So his wrist is very straight. And very loose. loose, very loose. Put the weight down here. His thumb is pretty much in the middle of the fretboard, so he can access. Because he, this is a, it's a wide neck with the six strings on it on the bass. It's wider than even a normal guitar. So, yeah. but he has full access, and he can go up and down. Absolutely. And then his fingers is similar to uh, classical. I'm, I'm, I'm looking around for my laptop. For the right, the right, right hand. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. So he, uh, it's very like a classical, and it's interesting because that technique i've taken classical guitar and it's it makes it it's easier less stressful it's especially on your arm on yes. your wrist i'm here there's no way mm -hmm. that's something i learned from gary gary willis i went to a clinic that he did at the base center here in la you remember anybody remember the base center no mm -hmm. <laughs> um, with alan was who was the owner and i went to a clinic of his and his thing was take the weight off be free so you're you know yeah when you start to be doing, really loose which is a trip because when i go rocking out i go to thicker strings and i go to higher action and it's now it's it's another animal but it's cool to be able to do to be to go back yeah. and forth on the six there's definitely a technique well, a what position. you're playing now you're playing lighter yes much absolutely. lighter yeah but you're getting all the i mean look how nimble yeah do that again And he's using fingers, so yeah. And well, I was, I was thinking, Marco. Actually, yes, this is your. This is you said. This is your favorite bass, or one of your favorite basses. One of them. Yeah. So, um, would you mind just kind of doing a little show off thing with that, and just kind of showing what you can do specifically with a fretless bass? Oh yeah, yeah. So show crazy. off. Uh, kind of what you were doing when you were warming up. Do I have any flowers in my hair? <laughs> <laughs> I'm going way back. Thank there you, you go. I could go on for it, and I do sometimes.